Chris Bumstead and Arnold Schwarzenegger, two muscle building icons. As a skinny kid growing up, those were the guys I looked up to. But after going to school and learning about exercise science and getting my degree, I realized that bodybuilders are losers. When you learn about exercise and strength and conditioning, you realize the way the bodybuilder moves, feels, and looks is off. And through maturity in my life and maturity in the gym, I realized that Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sebum are not people to look up to. You should be looking up to athletic bodybuilding icons like Colby Covington and of course Leon Edwards. With a physique like this, you perform well, you're healthy, you look good, and you pull girls. In this video, we're going to compare bodybuilding to athletic bodybuilding. We're putting Leon Edwards against Chris Bumstead. Of course, in a fight, it wouldn't be close. So instead we'll do something more fair. We'll put them up against each other in a physique competition. The first category we're going to compare the athletic bodybuilders to the bodybuilders in is muscularity and strength. The main goal of bodybuilding is to put on as much mass as possible. And bodybuilders have crazy muscularity so congrats to them. But there's so many aspects of bodybuilding that these dumb meatheads don't understand that aren't good. But gym culture pushes it to you like it is. Bodybuilding and bodybuilding muscle doesn't make you stronger. And bodybuilding and building a ton of muscle doesn't make you look good. This is a point I'll address later, but first we're going to talk about the strength of the bodybuilder. The top bodybuilders you see are technically strong in terms of absolute strength. Absolute strength just refers to the number of weight you're pulling. So you're just aiming for that top number. But pound for pound, pound, for pound bodybuilders are super weak. There's a strength and conditioning principle we call the strength to mass ratio, which describes a person's ability to accelerate their own body. And based on the strength to mass ratio, the best athletes or the best performing people are mid-sized athletes. Bodybuilders will act like this is biased and not true, but it makes sense. The mid-sized athletes are the ones that are too strong and too fast for people. They have that perfect mix of speed and power. While bodybuilders are not powerful, they're not fast, they just move a lot of weight. And when you talk about your recreational bodybuilders, they're not strong. I train for hypertrophy, meaning I don't focus as much on the strength side of things. I focus on more of the time under tension, the other uh, methods of hypertrophy. I used to be one of those people who believed I'd rather look like I'm strong and not be strong than look weak but be strong. But in athletic bodybuilding, you can do both. You can look strong and be strong. Bodybuilding, you can only choose one, and that's obviously looking strong. But once you become more knowledgeable about strength and conditioning, your perception of bodybuilders being strong changes to what is reality. And what is reality is that they're weak. Bodybuilders have weak cores because they avoid using core and balance whenever possible. An example is that they do a lot of exercises sitting down or they use machines with the intent of removing almost all core and stability demands to isolate the muscle more. So yes, you're gonna build more muscle there, but at a cost. Bodybuilders like to cope with the fact that their cores and stability suck by acting like the core and stability in an exercise is terrible. Instead of doing your squats with a barbell, I highly recommend trying out the Smith machine. Since the bar path is now fixed, you're able to get deeper at the bottom with much more stability, which allows you to achieve more knee flexion, more lengthening of the quads, and far fewer limiting factors like low back strength, core strength, and balance. But that's what makes these great compound lifts so great. That's what makes the squat so great, the deadlift, the overhead press, the stability and the core demands required from your body. Athletes are very muscular, but just not as muscular as bodybuilders. When you do athletic bodybuilding or you train to be an athlete, you get that combination of a bodybuilder, power lifter, and runner all in one. Pound for pound, athletes are insanely strong and their cores are also insanely strong. I love using John Moran as an example of someone who looks weak, but is super strong because he can almost jump 50 inches off the ground. Plus, here's a picture of him curling 50s. His priority is a sport, while athletic bodybuilding, your priority is to look athletic and look good. So yeah, you won't be as explosive as John Morant, but you'll be more muscular and look great. Plus, you have a higher strength ceiling. In terms of muscularity and strength, bodybuilders overdo both if they even are strong at all. With athletic bodybuilding, you build muscularity and strength that is applicable to everything you do and makes you look, move, and feel great. Our next category is movement and functionality, which I categorize as speed, strength, and agility all into one. Spoiler alert, this category isn't even close. A bodybuilder can't even really do one, let alone all three of them. They move like crap. They're not strong relative to their body weight and ask a bodybuilder to walk for a minute without gassing out. While an athletic bodybuilder can do everything. They can run a good mile, clock in a nice 100 meter sprint, move quickly and swiftly, and lift a ton of weight. With athletic bodybuilding, it creates a body that's too big for the small guys and too fast for the big guys. In my opinion, weightlifting should always be used to improve your life, and bodybuilding doesn't do that. In my opinion, weightlifting should be used to improve your confidence, and there's two components of that. The first is being looking good, and the second, 
performing well. When you have an athletic body, you have a physical advantage over almost everybody. You could beat anybody in a physical competition. That gives you another layer of confidence. And I'll use this to address a common point against me in my comment sections, which is that if you're a natty, you'll never look like a bodybuilder, no matter how hard you try. I disagree with that, but besides that point, it also still hurts your performance because it's not just how much muscle you build that can improve or hurt your performance. It's also how you build that muscle. Recently, I just launched an athletic bodybuilding community with my brother, Martin. Not gonna lie to you guys, it's pretty expensive. It's only for people who are truly disciplined and committed to building an athletic and aesthetic body designed to improve all aspects of their life, from your physical health, to your mental health, to your social life. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out. In this community, you build a personal relationship with me and my brother, so we can help you use athletic bodybuilding the way it's designed to, to help you improve your life and look like Leon Edwards, which leads into the next category, which is attractiveness. Tons of these bodybuilders who you think are your friends will say stuff like this. I said this once before, and I'll say it again. We don't do it for you. This is an example of the easy truth, and there's a reason why it's called the easy truth, because you get tons of support because it's easy to say and everybody loves it. I'm a big advocate of the harsh truth. People won't like me for it, but because it's true and very applicable, and you've never heard it before, it improves your life far more than the easy truth. And the harsh truth about being attractive is, the more attractive you are, the better your life is. The more attractive you are, the better people treat you. The more attractive you are, the more money you make. I could go on and on about how important it is to be attractive. I started lifting weights for girls, but eventually I started lifting weights more for myself. But I always keep that mindset of lifting for girls in my head because it's allowed me to keep progressing and keep living a better life centered around fitness. There's a reason why bodybuilders say we don't do it for you. It's because they know they're unattractive. And in my opinion, there's a mental component and something wrong with the bodybuilder to build so much muscle where it hurts their performance and their looks. The top G said it best. Bodybuilding is a beauty pageant where dudes try their best to put on muscle so other dudes can say, you're the best looking dude. It's gay, it's super gay. It's partially a beauty pageant. We're judging the aesthetics, the beauty of the body. And so why does it even get brought up? Why would anyone care? Why would it even be brought up? Why would someone try to insult or put someone else down by calling or referring to that person as being gay? Women are attracted to physically capable men, which is why women are more attracted to the athletic body. And when you talk about physically capable, the easiest way to phrase it is a guy who can fight and perform, which is why women prefer the athletic body type over the bodybuilder's body type. Research conducted by scientists from Chapman University shows that to a certain point, becoming bigger and leaner becomes more unattractive. And the authors of this research study stated that men with moderate muscularity are rated the most attractive. And scientists who conducted a research study at the University of Texas had a similar conclusion, which stated that although many men believe that women prefer that bodybuilder look, in reality, women prefer moderately muscular, athletic looking guys like Leon Edwards. So in other words, women want guys who have slightly more muscle and slightly less body fat than your average Joe. And if you still don't believe me, go look at these interviews or surveys where guys ask women which body type they prefer. They always say the same thing. It's that Leon Edwards look or that skinny model look and almost never that sebum or bodybuilder look. So if you want to live a good life, you got to look attractive. It's literally that simple. And no matter how many times I put this in the face of bodybuilders, they get upset with me and don't agree with me. But I'm applying research and fact and data to tell you that bodybuilders aren't attractive. I still am a big advocate of doing what you want to do, but I'm a much bigger advocate of living a good life, which comes from looking good. It's not the fat women that are on the yacht with these rich billionaires. It's those Instagram models that are. Of course, a little different from guys and girls, but being a attractive will always be one of the most important factors of life. And the last category is health. Bodybuilders have crappy health. Your body is not meant to put on muscle that doesn't have performance benefits. So it's not just steroids that are the problem. It's adding tons of weight that your body doesn't want to put on. Because whether it's fat or muscle, weight is weight. And more people use steroids than you think. In this research study, they concluded that 15 to 30 percent of gym goers use steroids and the majority of these people don't compete and aren't athletes so using that information you can conclude that the biggest guys at your gym or the guys that look levels above everybody else are on some form of ped and in terms of health this is where i divide athletic bodybuilders with athletes because in my opinion almost every athlete at a pro level is on some form of peds but if you're just a recreational athletic bodybuilder there's absolutely no need to take steroids because bodybuilding is an unhealthy sport 
Athletic bodybuilding is a healthy lifestyle. I came into fitness YouTube and the fitness community providing different ideas based on fact. I provided tools to help people improve their athleticism and look good, to look more attractive and live a better life. And the bodybuilders can't say the same thing, which is why they don't like me. Here's a video going over why bodybuilders hate me so much and why they're so sensitive because they know they're unattractive and athletic bodybuilding is way better than bodybuilding. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.